We're all set. Good morning, CC Nagi. Ooh, I got some new Yeah, we got a couple who are awake here. Let's try this again. Good morning, CC Nagi. I had coffee this morning, so I'm feeling great. Yeah, we are excited to be here. Um, for those of you who may have seen me before, I've been here blessed to be with the worship team for the past six weeks. Kayla, Debbie, thank you. Jacob, I don't know if he's here, and Keith. But uh, I've had a blast being with you guys. And today, I have the treat of introducing the worship band that I play with. This is Psy 8. We're family or close to it. And uh, we're just very excited to be here with all of you this morning to worship. And I got permission from Pastor Jared to let you know that uh, we are doing our album release on September 12th in Torrington. You can talk to me if you want some details, but if you like what you hear this morning and you like worshiping with us, be sure to come on that day and we'll be doing some originals and uh, worshiping that way too. So once again, we are excited to be here and for the songs that we're doing this morning, you may know some of them, you may not, but Kayla over there in the red, she's got a paper with a code that you can scan and it'll pull up the lyrics for you so you could sing along with us and we would be very happy if you did. So. Uh, I think that's it. We're ready to get worshiping. All right. Very cool. Here we go. There you go. Stand if you want to worship with us.
As long as you all agree to worship with us. We good? You guys sounded good from up here. Sounded even better to him, because that's what this is about, right? song here. I don't know why we call fast songs praise and slow songs worship. It's really all worship, but this is one that I'm hoping you know. One that I did uh, the first, I think the first week that I was able to join you guys. And 
and just kind of talked about how we take the word amazing for granted. Use it to describe things like food or, you know, maybe a place that we go. But the love of God, that is something that's truly amazing. And so I just pray that as we're singing this song and you're worshiping with us, keep that in mind, how awesome it is. The creator of the universe loves you, is concerned with you personally. That's an amazing thing.
once again, we are so thankful to be with you this morning. It seems like the worship time just flies by, but we got one more song that we're hoping you will celebrate with us on this one. And even if you've never heard it before, you're going to be able to sing along. All you have to do is repeat after me on the chorus.
drawers go with us this morning. Father, we thank you for this great time. What a great day to gather together for multiple bodies to come together and the privilege of worshiping you. Pray for the rest of the people. The rest of the time um, brings glory to you and feeds our souls and our spirits. In Jesus' name. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. good morning. Good morning. Can we just get one final hand clap for side eight? <laughs> it's really special to have them come with us uh, this Sunday morning and lead us in worship. Super appreciative. Thank you, guys. Uh, so in case you're here and you don't know who I am, I'm uh, Pastor Jared here. The pastor is Jubilee. Jubilee, say hi. Hi. Now, four months, a little bit early. <laughs> But you never know. Could have been Miracle Sunday. I don't know. So close. So close. Uh, just in case she starts crying, I said, just say a few words here. Do I have any baby holders? I would offer their services. Nice. Just a few. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. But I wanted just to tell you, welcome this morning. And I'll tell you what, out of all the Sundays, we've been meeting outside every Sunday since I think June 7th. This is by far and away the best weather. This is great, isn't it? Very nice, very nice. God is good for sure. Uh, and so if this is your first time here, or maybe you've heard about us kind of here and there, uh, feel free to check us out on the web, www.ccnoggy.com. It's got all of our info there, anything that you might want to know. Uh, there's a whole bunch of ways to connect, even during COVID. Uh, so all kinds of things are happening online, all kinds of different options, so please, be sure to check some of that out. Um, I also wanted to let you know that uh, this morning uh, I won't be preaching. We have a Brother Ali. So, Brother Ali, could you make your way up over here? So this is Pastor. Uh, this is Pastor Ali Gray, and I first met Pastor Ali. What was that maybe like a month ago? A couple months. A couple months ago. In June. Yeah. 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 In June. So we've done, uh, met him, uh, first time I met him was at an event in Waterbury in the Green. It was a unity event. And then uh, we had a chance to catch up after that. And then we were here in Naugatuck on the Green. And the purpose of those particular events was that we were trying to just rally people together around Jesus and around the good news. Yeah. Yeah, that's just like super needed. Uh, we're not trying to rally around politics or personal opinion or whatever. Uh, we're trying to rally against the person that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus Christ said that. And he's also full of a whole bunch of good news that we need to hear, that we need to continue to talk about. And uh, it's important to be around that stuff. So we did a couple of events. I had a chance to, to meet him and said, Pastor Ali, you got to come down and share with our church family. Would you be open to that? And thankfully, he was. And, and then also, very cool, he was the assistant coach for a while, right, at the high school here yeah. in town? Yeah. So he was. This year he's a head coach, so call him head coach. Yeah. Head coach. It's awesome. It's awesome. And before I turn it over to him, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pray for our kids. And uh, if Associate Pastor E could come on up, there would be a trio of us up here. And uh, this week, uh, school is going to start. And... Listen, we all know, who knows what this school year holds? My heart goes out to the teacher, every administrator, every parent, every kid. And what we try to do every year is pray a prayer of blessing over our kids. And so uh, E is going to help us out with that. He's also going to remind you kiddos of the memory verse. And uh, if your kids are here and they got a bag, you've noticed inside that bag, there's a raffle ticket, there's a bulletin to do, there's snacks. I have adults looking at me with envy right now. How come I didn't get one? Sorry. But inside there, there's like some raffle tickets, and they can trade those raffle tickets in for some different prizes all the way in the back. If everybody could turn around real quick. Julie, wave hi. There you go. That's my beautiful bride. There she is. So if your kids 
want to go back there and check out that stand or say they have a memory verse or they filled out their bulletin, they have their raffle cards, please find her back there, okay? So, Pastor E, there you go. Thank you, Pastor Jared. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everybody. Good morning. It's a beautiful day out here. It's so wonderful to see new faces out here with us. So I just want to thank you guys for coming out. Uh, worship was amazing. Um, I know that that word I wasn't supposed to use, amazing, because it is amazing love for us. But worship was extravagant. How about that? So amazing. God, God's love is amazing. You know, uh, uh, when when we were in a pit of hell, God reached out and grabbed us out, snatched us out of the pit of hell. He loves each and every one of us. No matter what we've done in life, what, no matter what we continue to do, we just got to repent. You know what I mean? And, and, and he loves us. He loves us so much so that he sent his, his son to die on the cross for each and every one of us. So um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for that. Because he loves me that much. He loves you that much. Uh, so I'm up here for the memory verse. So kiddos, if you if you remember the memory verse, please come see me. Come see Julie. Uh, there's some gifts, as Pastor said already. Um, but the memory verse is coming out of Romans chapter 6, verse 11. And it's, uh, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to to God in Christ Jesus. So if you guys could remember that, I'm gonna say it two more times so that way you can, you know what I mean, you can get it. So it's even parents, we need to remember this too as parents for our children. Because we, we are the ones who feed our children the word of God. So count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. One more time. Count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you so much, Lord. Uh, it says, your word says, where there's two or more gathered, you are in the midst, Lord. We thank you, Father God, that you are here even right now as I speak, Lord. Father, we lift up our children to you. We ask for blessings upon blessings over their life, Father God, for protection over their lives, Lord. Next week, Father God, school starts. It's a new season of school. We haven't been through this type of season before. But God, we thank you that everything is in your hands, Lord. I pray if there's any anxiety, any stress, any depression that's going on, I remove it right now in the name of Jesus. Father, that you would be over us, Father God, that you would help us parents to continue to feed our children your word, Father. That even if we're doing school online, Father God, that you would use our children, Father God, to even speak to teachers, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for uh, head coach, uh, Pastor Ali, Father God, a man of God who's inside the school, Lord. I ask that you use him in a mighty way, Father God, to show your love, Father God, to those that are lost. Father, that you would continue to fill us, that you would continue to be with us, that you would continue to guide us, that you would continue to provide for our every need as you already have been, Lord. We thank you, we love you, Father God, for that, un uh, uh, that unending love that you have for us, Father God that unfailing love that you have for us, Lord. We thank you for it. We love you for it. Father, I ask, Father God, that you would fill us with that love, Father God, so we can continue to pour that love out into the atmosphere, into, into uh, uh, wherever we go, the surroundings or wherever we at. So, Father, we love you, we praise you, we give you all the honor and the glory, and it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. Pastor Ali. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How you doing? Can you hear me okay? Can you turn me up a little bit? Um, I'm going to invite my daughter Maya to come up. She's going to lead us in a song called Refiner. This is the baby of my family. Maya, my daughter, give her a hand. And uh, I just want to acknowledge my beautiful wife, Cindy. Say hi to my beautiful wife. We've been married 31 years. 
32 years, I'm sorry. 32 years, and I'm telling you, she is the cream in my coffee. And we make a nice mixture together. Mine's the, mine's the proof of that. Um, and my grandson, Ozzy, right there. What's up, Ozzy? Ozzy's one and a half. He's your true worshiper. And my beautiful granddaughter, my first, or well, my third granddaughter, my third grandchild, Peyton Olivia. Say hi, Peyton. And then I got to acknowledge my football sons, Aaron Smith, senior at, at Naugatuck High School this year. Yeah. And Blake Andrews, a senior at Naugatuck High School this year. Yeah. If you get a chance, come check them out. All right, and um, you know, it's such a privilege for me to share the word of God. And I want to tell you this, I am a worshiper. I grew up in a Baptist background and uh, a lot of times when I was younger, I listened to the choir sing. I didn't have a good voice, but I tried to make a joyful noise to the Lord. Um, and, but when I really surrendered my life fully to the Lord 27 years ago, God really showed me the power of worship. Because I went to a church, and in that church, there wasn't, the church that I grew up in was mostly black people. I went to this non-denominational church, and it was all different kinds of people there. And um, they were worshiping. They had the words up on the screen, and they were worshiping. And I started singing. And that day, I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. The power in the presence of God just filled me. And it was like God just wrapped me, literally wrapped me in his arms and said, Ali, I love you. He said, Ali, I made you for a purpose and a destiny. I have great things for you to do. And that day I felt the joy that I've never felt before. And the first thing that I did was I got on the phone and I called my wife and said, honey, you're not going to believe this. She was working at South Bay Transport School and I was home with my two boys at the time. I said, Jesus Christ is alive. Yeah. Jesus is alive. And my wife thought I was crazy. She came, because I, I, I always went into things pretty heavy. And, and uh, she came home and I was like, let's pray together. And she, was, she didn't want to pray with me. And um, so anyway, you know, I prayed for her. I said, Lord, you got you to reveal yourself to her. And a month later, she gave her heart to the Lord. And we've been running with Jesus ever since. Hallelujah. And uh, Maya's going to sing this song. And, I'm just going to ask you, because I know that the Bible says in Psalms 22 that God inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. So please worship with us as she leads us in the refiner's refiner.
the same yesterday, today, and forever. You have not changed. God, you still reveal yourself to people. You still give people Damascus Road experiences like Saul, Lord, and turn them into Paul. You changed their lives, Lord. And Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus, Lord, if there's anybody here that does not know you, that has never surrendered their life to you today, 
Father, I thank you, God, that you reveal yourself to them, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You are a consuming fire, Lord. And, Lord, we ask you, Lord, to burn us lovely, burn us holy. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for your, your presence here today. Father, I pray, God, that your word would come alive to everyone that is here. Holy Spirit, make the things of Christ known to us today. And, Father, I pray, God, that I would decrease, and Jesus, you would increase, and you would have your way. Lord, I invite you to go up and down every area of this Everybody that's gathered here, all these neighboring houses, Father, let your presence flood this place and flood this house and flood these borough, the borough of Naugatuck, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We give you praise today. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many people know God has been good to them? Clap your hands like God's been good to you. Hallelujah. You know, if you go see a show, sometimes they give the person that's the main attraction, they give them a standing ovation. Can we give Jesus a standing ovation if you can? Let's give Jesus a standing ovation. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus. It is all about you today. And we welcome you in this place, and we thank you. God, there is none like you. You are awesome and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You can be seated. If you have your Bibles, this is going in and out here. If you have your Bibles or you have your phone, whatever you're using, um, could you please turn to Acts chapter 17? That will be our text today. Um, and I want to thank Pastor Jared and his wife, Julie, and the leadership of this church. Put your hands together for them. And uh, you talked about a divine connection, us connecting, and then I've got a chance to pray with this brother a couple of times. He is a man of God. He's a man of God. And I love him. And it, we, our spirit's just connected. All right. Um, Acts chapter 17, I'm going to begin reading here, verse 22. And just to kind of give a preview of what's going on here, when this COVID hit, God took me to the book of Acts, and I began to go from the book of Acts and go through every chapter. And uh, the book of Acts is when the New Testament church began. It was not a dead church. It was a living church. And it changed the world. It changed the world. And uh, we are a byproduct of what those guys got together and did, what God did through the disciples in the early church. And the church is still marching on. And Jesus said... I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Jesus Christ is still building, building his church today. COVID can't stop it. Amen? Amen. Acts chapter 17, verse 22. So Paul, standing before the council, addressed them as follows. Men of Athens, I notice you are very religious in every way. For as I was walking along, I saw many shrines and one of your authors had the inscription on it to an unknown God whom you worship without knowing is the one I'm telling you about. He's the God who made the world and everything in it. Since he's Lord of heaven and earth, he doesn't live in man-made temples and human hands can't serve his needs for he has no needs. He himself gives life and breath to everything and he satisfies every need. From one nation, he created all nations throughout the whole world. He decided beforehand when they should rise and fall, and he determined their boundaries. His purpose was for the nations to seek after God and perhaps feel their way towards him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live, move, and exist. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. And since this is true, we should think of God, we, should, we shouldn't think of God as an idol designed by craftsmen from gold and silver or stone. God overlooked people's ignorance about these things in earlier times. But now he's commanded everyone everywhere to repent of their sins and turn to him. For he has set a day for judging the world with justice by the man he has appointed 
and he has approved to everyone who this is raising it from the dead. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. When they had heard Paul speak about the resurrection of the dead, some laughed in contempt, but others said we want to hear more about this later. That ended Paul's discussion with them, but some joined and became believers. Among them was Dionysus, a member of the council, and a woman named Demarius, and others with them. Amen. I want to focus on verse 26, where it says, From one man, God made every nation. Now, we are living today in a time in the United States of America where there's a lot of racial unrest. And I can tell you this. I said this very proudly. My ethnicity is African. Um, my nationality is American, but my identity is in Jesus Christ. And once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, it's not about the color of your skin, but it's about the wages of your sin. Now, I want you to understand something. I searched the scriptures, and God put this on my heart when my wife and I were in Bible school because we went to uh, Dallas, Texas, to Christ for the Nations, and my wife, she's peach, and I'm brown, all right? Now, let me let get some, now, this, this is brown right here. This podium is black. I think people need to learn the colors. I'm a brown man. Well, anyway, we go down there, and it's a Bible school, and I'm thinking everything is cool, and they see my wife and I, we're married, and they have a few, we have a few kids. And so some people, even though they were Christians, Bible-believing Christians, they looked and said, well, what about the kids? And me, I, I had a conversation with a brother when we were doing ministry. He was like, what about the kids? And I said, yeah, my kids are just like your kids, a perfect mixture of you and your wife. That's what they are. But I want to tell you, one of the biggest lies ever perpetrated is that there's more than one race. There is only one race. It is a scientific fact, and more importantly, it's a biblical fact. It's a biblical fact. If you, if you look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make mankind in our own image. And I'm going to sum this up. Um, and so Adam and Eve were made. Everybody agree with that? Say amen if you agree with that. So Adam and Eve populated the whole earth. Adam and Eve populated the whole earth. But in Genesis chapter 6, things got so bad that God said, I'm sorry, there's, there's violence and there's evil all over the place. Some of the kind of what's going on right now. And uh, he said, I'm sorry that I made mankind. He, and he regretted it. And he said he was going to wipe out the whole earth. I'm going to take him out. But there was one guy, his name was Noah. Amen. Say, thank God for Noah. Thank God for Noah. So Noah found favor with God. And so God, say, God said to Noah, you know, I'm going to send a flood. Because that's how it is when you have a relationship with God. He'll tell you different things. He said, I'm going to send a flood. The flood came and wiped out everybody except for Noah, his sons, him, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and uh, their wives. In and, and, and Genesis chapter 9, it talks about uh, them populating the whole earth. So each and every one of us right here, if you're a human being, guess what? We're family. Amen. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say we're family. We're family. Stand, uh, look at somebody back there and somebody look at somebody back there and say we're family. We're family. We are family. Hallelujah. So we are family. We're family. But the culture will tell us, no, there's different races. We, we're so caught up in it. You know, we go to fill out an application. We go to fill out for services. And what do they say? What race? You know what I put down, started putting down years ago? Human. That's what I put down, human. That's what race I am. And, and that's what the Bible says. And that's what science says. Human beings are a class of species called homo sapiens, all right? That's what we are. We are a family. And to squash all this, this lie of racism, we got to begin to teach the truth. Amen. And the truth is we are family. 
We're all brothers and sisters. And once we come to Christ, it should, become, it, should, it should become real to us. It should become real to us. Everything going on in the United States of America right now, the answer is in the church. It's believers coming together. You know, and that's why God put it on my heart back in June and July to do unity services, inviting local churches and believers to come together and to pray. Because this world right now, the culture, there's such a battle taking place. You have darkness, which is a part of the culture, and we are the light. You have fear, which is, in, which is attacking us, and we are the ones of faith with hope. Amen? Amen. We have the truth, which we're supposed to present to the world through Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ is the truth. And there's the lies of the enemy. The lies of the enemy. So I want to tell you this, you know, when if I've had, I had surgery and, uh, you know, when I get, when I had to have the surgery, I had heart surgery a couple years ago to get an ablation done. And, uh, I had to get some blood transfusions. Now, if I, if, if this, this whole thing of race, if we were different races, we'd have different blood types. There'd be black blood, white blood. Hispanic blood, Asian blood, Oriental blood, all kinds of blood. But there's only four blood types found in the human race. And it goes across every ethnicity. Every ethnicity. So that proves that we are a family. We are a family. And that's the way that God made it. Amen? Amen? So there's a couple points I want to point out. You can write these down. Number one. We are family. Anybody writing it down? If you're writing it down, you can put it down on your phone or whatever. Um, number two, we are God's offspring, his children. We're all God's offspring or children. And if we, if we really believe that and teach that and practice that, there'd be no need for all this division and hatred that's going on. Amen? Where's offspring? Number three, each and every one of us was created by God with a purpose and a destiny. With a purpose and a destiny. I'm going to tell you this right now. Each and every one of you, you are priceless originals created by God with a purpose and a destiny. You are all priceless originals. We are all priceless originals. We're not mistakes. God gave us everything that we need to fulfill our purpose and destiny in him when he created us. Everything about you is perfectly made to be born at the right time and to do everything that he created you to do. And God's timing is perfect. And so many times we don't see that as, as believers. You know, I pray, th th I pray to God about different things. And, um, you know, I prayed, I want to say, 26, uh, 2006, I had my first interview for a high school football, football coaching job. And I prayed that, you know, God, I want the job. I didn't get it, but I got hired on as assistant. And I continued to pray, and I had six other opportunities. And finally, God opens the door for me. Not the way that I pictured it. Not the way that I thought it was going to happen. But God's timing is perfect. God's timing is perfect. And I love my job. As the head football coach, I loved it as an assistant. I loved the kids. You know, God's uh, brought the kids in my life, and every chance I get to coach anybody, first thing I let them know is that I'm a Christian, and you know that, that God has a plan and purpose for your life. And I told them about Jesus. You know, I literally, Amen, Amen, Amen. I live to make Jesus Christ known. Amen. And the fourth thing is this, we must come together in Christ and be the church. We've got to be the church. It is time to stop playing church and being in the church. You know, one good thing about this whole COVID thing, you know, you can look at it different ways, but I'm telling you, it's got the church out of the building. You know, we, we, we were in the building, we go to church, we do our service, we go home. Now we have, you know, you guys are meeting outside. That's awesome, we're meeting outside. And, but it's caused the church to meet in different ways and to get creative. And when persecution comes on the church, and that's what has taken place, 
when they say we can't gather together, that is persecution. God always uses that persecution to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen? And he's looking for men and women, boys and girls, to, to stand up and to, to be a witness, to be a light shining in the darkness. Amen? So uh, I want to tell you this too. And, and you know, the, during the, after, the, after, uh, Moses, after uh, Noah and his sons populated the earth, in uh, Genesis chapter 12, Babel came, the Tower of Babel. The human, mankind was together, and they were doing, they were building a tower up to uh, heaven. And God says that they could, anything that they put their mind to do, they could do. And that's what happens when human beings come together. When brothers and sisters come together in Christ, we can, there's nothing that we can't do, and God can't do through us. So anyway, the Tower of Babel came, and then God bought, bought uh, separated people and brought the different languages in. And uh, at, up to that point, everything was separated. But on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 12, if you turn there real quick. A family reunion took place. Touch your neighbor and say, we are family. I mean, say, look at your neighbor and say, we are family. <laughs> so, I just want to read this. Um, and this is what we are to be. We are to be the church. And um, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Everybody got it? It's what it says. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. Everyone came running and they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, yet we hear them speaking in our native languages. Here we are, Parthenians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, province of Asia, Nigeria, Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the areas of Libya around Cyrene. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, Arabs, and we all hear them speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed. What can this mean, they asked each other. What it meant was that God was having a family reunion. God was having a family reunion. He was bringing his people together and it was breaking across ethnic lines, it was breaking across language lines, it was breaking across the earth suits they were wearing, whether they were brown, black, white, whatever it was, it was breaking through that. And that's what took place on the day of Pentecost. And I know this year we was, my wife and I were supposed to host our family reunion in Waterbury, but because of COVID we had to cancel it. But there's nothing like a family reunion. When you get to meet your family you, and you, that you don't know, you get to meet your family you haven't seen in a while. And that's what God did on the day of Pentecost. And he brought things together and he created his New Testament church, which you and I are a part of. And we need to walk in that. And that we need to walk in that because that's what's going to, it's going to take to change this nation. That's what's going to take to change this world. Because the bottom line is this, folks. Jesus Christ is coming back. He is coming back. I don't know when he's coming back. The Bible says in Matthew 24, 44, he's coming back at a time when you think not. So I don't think he's coming back today, but he might. It might be tomorrow. It might be a year, two years. I don't know. But we need to be ready. Look at your neighbor and say, be ready. Is, where's my city? Okay. Um, so I just want to pray 
you know, I just, that's what God put on my heart to share. But I wanted to pray for everyone here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the message that God gave me. We are a family. We are a family. We are brothers and sisters. And we need to walk that out. And if we walk that out, we're going to be a light shining in the midst of darkness. And I love all of you. I thank you for the opportunity to share with you all. Um, so I'm just going to, mine's going to come up and play a little bit. But I want to ask, is there anybody here that has never given their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ? If you could just, just uh, bow your heads for a second. Everybody bow your heads for a second. I want to ask, is there anybody here, you say, Pastor Ali, I've never given my heart to the Lord Jesus Christ before, and I want to give it to him. Because that's what allows you to begin to walk in your purpose when you give your heart to him. So I'm just going to, if there's anybody, if you could just lift up your hand. Just want to pray. All right, I see that hand. Any other hands? A couple hands. All right, praise God. All right, I'm just going to pray. If you lifted your hands, um, I'm just going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God. I thank you for your word, Lord God. I thank you for your presence. Hallelujah. And if, you know, if you, if you, add, if you lifted your hands, I, I'd like you to come up. I really, I want to just pray for you. If you lift your hand, come up here. I want to pray with you real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, this is my buddy, my, my football son, Aaron. How you doing, man? Um, Aaron, I just want to tell you, you know, today you're making a decision that's going to, it's going to change your life. You know, and all of heaven is rejoicing. All of heaven rejoices over one person giving their heart to the Lord. So I'm just going to pray for you. If you could just repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Father, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. I believe that Jesus Christ came and died for me. He paid the price for my sins. He rose again to save my life. I confess him as Lord today. Jesus, come into my heart. Make me new. Help me to be everything you created me to be. I surrender my life to you today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. And uh, is there anybody else that today, I don't want to belabor it, I know service have gone a little bit longer, but if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you never came to a moment and said, you know what, I've always known about God, always known about Jesus, and part of the passage that he read in Acts 17 was that actually the city he was in was super religious. Religious. They're very religious. They knew that there was a higher power, that there was a God, that something's out there. It just it doesn't make all this sense. Everything just appeared. They were very religious. They were trying to approach him in a religious way. But when it comes to God the Father, it doesn't require religiosity. It requires somebody in their heart saying, Jesus, I want you in. It's a relationship. Totally different. Totally different. It's one-on-one. -on -one. And so our Heavenly Father wanting his kids back because sin just made us go astray and just get crazy. We try our own way, and it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. And so is there anyone else here that has never given their lives to Jesus? You've never actually said, Jesus, you took my spot on the cross. It should have been me. I don't want to play religion. I want to have a real deal with you. And it can start today, August 30th. Anybody else? Anyone else? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Let's go, Jeff. Let's go, baby. And I tell you what, you guys might be thinking, man, I, I wouldn't want to walk up there in front of people and do this stuff. 
But I tell you what, Jesus said something super interesting. He said, you know what? If you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you in heaven. Something about doing it public. And yeah, it puts you on the spot. It's kind of the idea. He's not called us to be top secret disciples where we just believe in Jesus and live for him when we're in our safe little home by ourselves. So it's not by accident that we got our young brother over there gave his life to the Lord. And it's not by accident that Jeff is here today either. It doesn't mean that after today, it doesn't mean that after today they're gonna be perfect. In fact, they're probably to be honest with you, there's more of a target and a bullseye on their back because now they're recognized in heaven as a threat. Where before, if they're left to their own way, trying to figure it out on their own, the enemy's totally fine with that. He's got a big problem when sons or daughters come back to their heavenly father and say yes and start to live for him. All of a sudden, it gets real. Everybody say, it gets real. So you got to pray for them, okay? It's important. It's not just like, oh, yeah, God, help them out. No, like, for real, pray for him this week. So just repeat after me, okay? Nothing magical about these words. It's more about your heart, all right? Heavenly Father, I give my heart to you. Heavenly Father, I give my heart to you. Today I stand. Today I stand. Wanting to give my life to you. Wanting to give my life to you. I should have been up on that cross. I should have been up on that cross. And you took my place. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that you've always done for me. And today, I acknowledge who you are, who I am, and I give my life to you. Come and fill my heart. Change everything that has been out of place. I look to you for strength. For security and relationship. Today I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It's awesome. And I tell you what, like, we have to close up, but if God's doing something in your heart and your life, so also, before you three, make sure you don't leave. I just want to talk with you for a couple minutes before you go. Um, anybody else, God is doing something in your heart and in your life? I guarantee you, there's someone around you here at church that would love to pray for you. They would love to pray for you. And if not, of course, come find me. All right, so let's close in prayer. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you have plans and purposes for people's lives, Lord. You're a real God. You're closer than we think, and you're better than we think. Everything that the enemy has painted, Lord, about you and what you're like and just a set of rules and super narrow, it's just not true, Lord, and I'm just so grateful for that. And so, Lord, we just pray that you'd make yourself alive, Lord, to these three individuals today, August 30th, they gave their lives to you. Now it starts. Now life really begins. And as a church family, we pray for their protection. And we pray for your spirit to just come through and be the dominant voice in their life. So when they don't know which way to go, we intercede on their behalf. And we pray that they would just know, that they would just have an understanding. They'd for the first time be able to sense your voice apart from their voice. So Father, thank you for using our church, Lord. Father, use every church in this town to proclaim your name and proclaim your truth. We thank you for this Sunday, Lord. I just pray blessings over each person, Lord. Help us to go out and be true reflections and ambassadors of your kingdom, Lord. It's not even about big groups, Father. It's just one-on-one, -on -one, doing life with people, Lord. Help us to be patient and understanding. Help us to be a forgiving people that doesn't hold on to offenses. Lord, God, take us to new places. You're going to use us, and we're going to be significant, Lord, as you see fit. Help us to stay in our own lanes, Lord. I thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. So glad you could be with us this morning. 
I was also told that if anybody wants any free veggies and fruit, there's a table back there. Uh, someone brought a whole bunch of stuff. They said, hey, just take it. So if you want some veggies and fruit, it's right there for you. If you want to stay for some prayer, I know I'll be up here. Pastor Ali will be. Come find us. Sure. Um, also, you know, God put on my heart. I have some t-shirts that says that all lives matter on them. And on the back, it's Acts 17, 26. If you'd like one, you can you can have one. I got some left in the box over there. So just come see me. All right. God bless you guys. Have a good day.